Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, can I please have your attention? At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers? There is additional seating upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Welcome to the stated meeting of October 28th, 2019. I'm Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Morelli. Present. Brannon. I'm here. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Present. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Present. Gordenchik. Here. <coughs> Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lantzman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Present. Mizell, Menchaca, Presente, Miller, Present, Moya, Perkins, Present, Powers, Here, Reynoso, Present, Richards, Present, Rivera, Present, Rodriguez, Rose, Present, Rosenthal, Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Here. Ballone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Cumbo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Mark E. Erson, pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church, located at 81st Christopher Street in New York, 10014. In this time of harvest and home, feasts and family, we give thanks. But we also hear the call to open our eyes and our hearts to those who do not share in this abundance. And so we pray. God of creation, lover of all, divine mystery we call by many names. The diverse works of your hands proclaim your majesty, your creativity, and your inclusivity. As we rejoice in the wonder and beauty of the season, as we give thanks for all that you have made and for all with which we have been blessed, open our eyes to see those who are in need, those who are hungry, those who are alone, those who are oppressed. Open our hearts to show compassion and mercy. Give us courage to turn towards and not away to walk with and not away, to invite in and not shun away. Remind us always that there is no justice in the land until all have a place at the table. Bless our city, grant wisdom and courage to those who govern, comfort all with your peace. Amen.
Speaker Corey Johnson to spread the invocation in full. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo. I want to thank uh, Pastor Mark Erson for being with us today. I make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. And Pastor Mark has served at St. John's Lutheran Church on Christopher Street in my district since 2011. He combined his love of theology and theater and spent years as an actor and as a theater teacher. Although he grew up in the church led by his father, Messiah Lutheran Church on Staten Island, Pastor Mark feared that he would not be able to follow in his father's footsteps because he is gay. But he followed his calling and was ordained in April of 2009 after studying at the General Theological Seminary in our great city and then the Theological Seminary in Philadelphia. And now he is a welcome and integral figure in the West Village. He leads St. John's with acceptance and optimism and drives forward countless initiatives to engage the LGBTQ community and further the artistic history of the village. He has tirelessly worked on behalf of homeless LGBTQ youth, offering opportunities and space for our trans community to gather and host activities. So I want to thank you again, Pastor Mark, for all you have done to support New Yorkers and especially the work you've done to minister on behalf of LGBTQ young people. And with that, Madam Majority Leader, I again make a motion that the invocation be spread full and upon the record. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now have the adoption of minutes. None. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo. We are here today on a very serious matter. Like all of you, I have read the report of the Committee on Standards and Ethics and accompanying resolution 1138, which is before us today, you will hear from Steve Matteo, the minority leader and the chair of standards and ethics after I speak. And we will also give Councilmember Andy King the opportunity to speak freely after Chair Matteo. I'll begin by saying that I believe that Councilmember King's behavior, which has been substantiated by the committee, is intolerable and unacceptable. Those violations outlined in the report are appalling particularly coming from an elected official who is duty-bound to serve the public. I will leave it to the committee who heard and evaluated the evidence over the course of days to discuss those violations. But as the council speaker, I have to say that Councilmember King's conduct goes well beyond seriously violating the council's equal opportunity employment policy, our rules, and the city charter's conflict of interest law. His conduct also shows complete and utter disdain and even contempt for this body and its processes, which he himself voted to approve at the beginning of each of his terms. Councilmember King came before the Standards and Ethics Committee in 2017 for a violation of the Council's EEO policy, which the committee substantiated. Because of that 2017 violation, he was required to take specialized training. What we didn't know then was that he had released the name of that staffer who had complained about his conduct to his staff both in retaliation against that staffer and in an effort to intimidate the rest of his staff from cooperating with the committee in his duty to assist in this council's role to judge the conduct of its members. We found this out during the course of the investigation that is before us today. In addition, as soon as the second investigation opened, he immediately began intimidating his staff to ensure that they would not cooperate with the committee's investigation and the council's processes. This time, the intimidation involved literally driving staffers out of his office through suspensions and the attempts to fire. Council King even jeopardized the health of one of his staffers in an attempt to force that staffer to leave his employment. The original complainant referred to in the report as the 2017 complainant spoke out publicly earlier today on her experience and her desire to see Councilmember King expelled from this body. I applaud her courage and deplore what she went through, and I hope every one of us here does. I applaud the courage of the witnesses in the current investigation who faced retaliation and came forward to speak to the committee. I am sickened by what they have endured because of Councilmember King's odious behavior. As for Councilmember King, I deplore his cowardice and the disdain with which he treated his employees the committee, 
and this entire body. He refused to speak to council investigators about the charges against him. He refused to meet with our special counsel. We gave him three weeks to prepare for the Standards and Ethics Committee hearing. We gave his attorneys the procedures for presenting evidence and calling witnesses. But instead of preparing a defense, he tried to destroy the evidence that could be used to substantiate the charges. He did this by intimidating and attempting to fire witnesses that had come forward. This shows an unprecedented level of contempt for the rules and processes of this body. No council member in the history of the modern city council has ever refused to participate in every phase of an investigation that actually resulted in a hearing before the Standards and Ethics Committee. This conduct merits sanctions of magnitude that we can be sure will both serve as a significant deterrent while fully protecting the staff that have been through so much and that allows for the swift detection of any bad behavior that might occur, which could result in even harsher sanctions for Councilmember King. Despite his claims to the contrary, I have no doubt in the integrity of this process. The Standards and Ethics Committee spent months on this case, in meetings, hearings, and deliberations. They weighed the precedents. They unanimously agreed on these sanctions before us. A 30-day suspension, the imposition of a monitor, and a large monetary penalty. This is a thoughtful and appropriate substantial sanction in light of Councilmember King's egregious behavior and the complete disregard for our process. I will recognize the Chair of Standards and Ethics by our rules, which Councilmember King has voted to approve. It was this committee that was charged with hearing and weighing the evidence and ensuring that the sanctions were commensurate with the violations. I think they did their jobs admirably, and we owe them a debt of gratitude. I want to turn it over as part of speaker time to Chair Matteo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to begin my remarks today by acknowledging two groups of people. First, every council member and member of the public owes a tremendous debt to the witnesses who courageously came forward in this matter. In the face of repeated retaliation, threats, and in some cases attempted firing, these individuals gave credible and powerful testimony to the committee. Without them, <clears throat> we would not be in a position to carry out one of our sacred duties as representatives of the people and hold a fellow member accountable for egregious misconduct. I must also thank my colleagues on the Committee on Standards and Ethics, as well as committee staff. As you all know, this matter has been ongoing for nearly eight months, and we have accumulated dozens of hours of witness interviews, hundreds of pages of document discovery, and conducted a two-day trial. <clears throat> Excuse me. Without the steady and consistent support of my colleagues on the committee and staff, the thorough, objective, and complete investigation and adjudication of this matter would have been impossible. With that said, I want to assure the rest of my colleagues that we on the committee did not, this take, did not take this duty lightly. From the outset, we operated with the assumption that Andy King is a duly elected member of the council and the representative of his constituents in the 12th district. We knew that if we found any substantiated evidence of wrongdoing, any punishment we recommended must be offered with the understanding that our colleague was elected by the people of the 12th district and should be measured to both adequately address misconduct while also respecting the rights of his constituency. We on the committee strongly believe that we've struck that delicate balance with our recommended sanctions. These sanctions respect the will of the voters of the 12th district while also addressing some of the most egregious conduct the council has ever seen. As anyone who's read our report knows, this is Councilmember King's second substantiated complaint before the Committee on Standards and Ethics. In 2017, he was found to have violated the Council's EEO policy and was directed to complete mandatory training. Because of this settlement, that matter was never presented to the rest of you as a body. However, less than two years later, we received a communication from the City's Department of Citywide Administrative Services that one of Councilmember King's former staffers had been denied unemployment benefits and had appealed that denial by claiming that the staffer had been constructively fired due to gender-based harassment by Councilmember King. It was this written finding by a state agency that Councilmember King had again engaged in gender-based harassment which started this second investigation. We began the investigation into these allegations in March of 2019 after receiving that notice from DCAS. The committee was ultimately unable to fully investigate the gender-based harassment allegations made by the former staffer, in part because the staffer ultimately declined to participate further in that investigation. 
However, during interviews, allegation after allegation and problem after problem surfaced regarding the function of Councilmember King's office. Perhaps one of the, mo the most disturbing allegations, which the committee found, eventually found to be credible and substantiated, was that in 2017, Councilmember King, in an effort to obstruct the first standards and ethics investigation, held a staff meeting in his home where he identified the 27 compla 2017 complainant by name and disparaged the complainant to his entire staff. This outrageous conduct was testified to at the disciplinary hearing by three staffers who would not have known the complainant's name but for Councilmember King's behavior. This is conduct that cannot and will not be tolerated at the Council. The evidence also clearly demonstrated that with regard to the investigation that led to the report now before you, Councilmember King repeatedly intimidated and punished staff who he thought had or would cooperate with the committee's investigation. Soon after the second investigation opened, in an effort to root out whomever had cooperated with us, Councilmember King held yet another staff meeting at his home and demanded to know what staffers had spoken with council investigators and disclosed what they had discussed. Of the three staffers who admitted they had cooperated, one was driven out of Councilmember King's office, another would have been fired but for the last minute intervention of administrative services and our office of the general counsel, and the third so clearly got the message that even a subpoena from the committee wasn't enough to compel that staffer's cooperation. In addition, the council, council member King attempted to fire another staffer who had witnessed much of this conduct and who ultimately testify, testified before the committee. Not only did our witnesses fully support each other in this, but we have the actual document showing that on the same day as our superseding charges were against him, Councilmember King came down to 250 Broadway and handed these separation forms into our Administrative Services Division. The evidence also clearly demonstrated that Councilmember King allowed his office to become unsafe and disorderly by condoning the conduct of a supervisor who repeatedly threatened staff with physical violence and create a volatile and dangerous work environment. Among the many examples of this egregious conduct, which Councilmember King not only implicitly condoned, but actually explicitly supported during a single conversation with council investigators, included threats of violence against and intimidating behavior towards Councilmember King himself. Beyond threatening the member, the staffer in question also threatened or intimidated multiple other King staffers. Condoning, facilitating, or permitting this conduct is wholly unbecoming of an elected representative of the people of New York City and must not be tolerated by the council. It is also clear that Councilmember King permitted, condoned, or facilitated numerous conflicts of interest in his office, conflicts that benefit both himself and his wife. Although this conduct is exhaustively laid out in all of its multifaceted and disturbing detail in the committee's report, we were perhaps most troubled by how our colleague allowed a space his spouse, rather, to use both council staff and council resources to further her own personal and professional interests. This included the use of council staff and time to plan, prepare for, and carry out an annual Caribbean treat, retreat that prominently featured our colleague's wife and once even including her daughter's wedding. It also included the regular use of Council Member King's email address to direct council staffers to carry out work on behalf of the wife's employer. We were also deeply troubled to learn of the Council Member King's outrageous and egregious statement about a picture taken at the Pride Parade. While the statement alone, which equates a celebration of our LGBT friends, families, and loved ones with child pornography, is utterly and despicable and disgusting, to make such a statement during a staff meeting and in the presence of a staffer who identifies as LGBT is simply unacceptable and must not be tolerated. Even with all the egregious behavior I've just laid out, the truth is that were it not for Councilmember King's behavior during the pendency of the investigation, we would probably not be discussing sanction of this magnitude contained in this resolution. From the beginning of this matter, which opened nearly eight months ago, Councilmember King was aware of the investigation and was offered the opportunity to engage with the committee. He was also advised to retain counsel to protect his interests during any such engagement. However, and from the outset, Councilmember King adamantly refused to cooperate. He refused many overtures from both the committee and the special counsel, and never once appeared for an interview with either committee investigators or the special counsel, except for one brief conversation, which was intended to defend the supervisor in his office, who was accused of threatening and intimidating behavior. During that conversation, Councilmember King never once denied that any of that supervisor's behavior had occurred and in fact appeared to condone it. 
Indeed, instead of cooperating, Councilmember King attempted to make a mockery of this committee and the council's rules and policies. I must reiterate for all of my colleagues and the public that Councilmember King was afforded every opportunity from before this matter was even officially opened by the committee until the moment before we vote to send it to the full body to engage with us, talk with us, and present his side of the story. Councilmember King had nearly eight months to engage with us, and this engagement could have taken the form of an interview with committee investigators, document exchange with the special counsel, and appearance at the disciplinary hearing. On that last point, and contrary to the narrative our colleague is portraying to the public, Councilmember King had the opportunity to face the special counsel, challenge her evidence, present his side of the story, and question and cross-examine witnesses on the record. However, rather than present his case and attempt to exonerate himself, Councilmember King attended a back-to-school event. We should not allow the waters to be muddied here. There are most definitely examples of due process being violated and individuals not being afforded a fair chance to defend themselves. This is unequivocally not one of those cases. Councilmember King was afforded every opportunity to defend himself and present his side of the story and squandered all of them. One of our colleagues' many claims about this matter is that he did not have enough time to adequately respond to the charges brought against him. Despite all the posturing and pontificating, the plan and undisputed fact is that the original charges were filed and sent to Councilmember King on August 21st. The hearing began on September 13th. That's over three weeks. The committee's procedures only require 10 days between service of charges and the hearing. You've also heard arguments from Councilmember King and his attorneys that they weren't granted an adjournment of the hearing. While the committee took those requests and certainly would have been inclined under normal circumstances to consider a reasonable adjournment, the evidence demonstrated that Councilmember King appears to have used the period leading up to the hearing to further retaliate against staffers who were cooperating or potentially could cooperate with our investigation by suspending or attempting to fire these witnesses. When the committee learned of this behavior, we were not going to stand by and give Councilmember King more time to hurt staffers who had done nothing more than carry out their obligations to the council to cooperate with our investigation. We were not going to allow him to undermine this committee's and this council's authority to judge the conduct of its members. When it actually came time to provide a hearing of the evidence for and against Councilmember King, the committee meticulously followed its internal disciplinary procedures and provided his attorneys with copies of all proposed exhibits and lists of witnesses. We then held a hearing on the record at which the committee heard from the special counsel as well as various witnesses. As laid out in the committee's procedures, Councilmember King was provided the opportunity to present his own witnesses and evidence and to question and attempt to impeach the special counsel's witnesses and evidence. As I just mentioned, and all of you know by now, Councilmember King failed to appear at the hearing. His attorneys only appeared to briefly object to the very fact that the hearing was taking place, and then they abruptly got up and left. As we lay out in the report before you, the committee found the witnesses at the hearing to be credible and damning. Over and over again, they supported and corroborated each other's testimony, and there were many pieces of objective documentary evidence that further supported the charges brought by the special counsel. Ultimately, after fully and thoroughly reviewing the evidence and assessing the credibility of the witnesses, the committee was unanimous in its determination that the four superseding charges had been substantiated by a preponderance of the evidence. In coming to this conclusion, the committee found that the evidence demonstrated that it was more likely than not that the conduct and behavior alleged in the charges had occurred. Now, there are some of you who may think this penalty is harsh. We have never before imposed sanctions of this magnitude, including suspension and a monitor. To those concerned about leveling too harsh a penalty, I ask, can we, a committee who has an obligation to protect staff, send staff back to an environment of fear and intimidation and give the council member the chance to finish firing the rest of the staffers he considers disloyal? And remember, he considers them disloyal because they did their duty to this body and the council. The committee exhaustively deliberated and debated the terms of this resolution and concluded that the suspension is significant enough that it will function both as a deterrent against future bad behavior and also give us the chance to get a monitor in place in Councilmember King's office who can develop a relationship with staff before Councilmember King returns. Once the member returns to his office, the monitor will only oversee employment-related matters between Councilmember King and his staff. 
The monitor will have no part in Councilmember King's role as a representative, representative of his district. Councilmember King will continue to introduce legislation, make budget and funding decisions, and negotiate land use matters. For those of you who think this penalty is not harsh enough, I must return to the opening of my remarks. Overturning the vote of the people of the 12th district or any other district should be reserved for cases in which, which we don't think we have any other alternatives. While we are the judge of our fellow members' conduct under the charter and are not bound by the state laws on elected office vacancy, I think it is instructive that the state law provides for the removal of an elected official only in instances involving conviction of a felony or a crime in violation of a member's oath of office. Most of what we found were egregious acts of the obstruction and retaliation, violations of the council's policy, and conflicts of interest violations. Simply put, while this co conduct is unquestionably bad and completely unacceptable, we on the committee ultimately found that it did not rise to the level of warranting the harshest penalty we have. In closing, I'd like to again commend my colleagues on the committee for working so hard on such a difficult matter. It is never an easy thing to be tasked with very publicly passing judgment on a colleague. And it is an entirely more difficult task when that colleague is the elected representative of your fellow New Yorkers. I thank you for your hard work. Even more importantly, I want to again remind my colleagues and the people of New York City of the huge debt they owe to the witnesses and complainants that came forward and cooperated with the committee. It takes tremendous courage and strength to tell their story and to appear at a hearing and open themselves up to cross-examination from someone who has already mistreated and retaliated against them. That is true strength, and the committee commends all those who helped us get to this place of holding an elected official accountable for misconduct. To respect the bravery of our witnesses, we on the community work to never lose sight of the great and serious responsibility we all bear to make the council a safe place to work. We are all a fundamental part of this institution, and this council is only as good and effective and worthy of its role in the city as its essential parts. With these considerations in mind, and after a painstaking process and many months of investigation, the committee submits to you what it found to be the appropriate response to the conduct uncovered here. Thank you for your time. I thank you, Chairman Radio. I now recognize Councilmember Andy King uh, to speak. Councilmember King, uh, if you would care to speak, will be given 15 minutes uh, to speak. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you all today for coming in uh, on your Monday, um, where you probably could be in your district doing other work. Um, I want to thank the Most High in Christ, who every day wakes me up to do the work of his children on this planet. Uh, being a son of a veteran, learning discipline, being a son of a mother who's been a wonderful leader in guiding my steps, to my grandparents, to my aunts, my daughters, my granddaughters, I say I love you, and I thank them for their support. Equally, and I want to say thank you to my neighborhood, my community who educated and raised me and voted for me to come down here and represent them. It's a sad day when your elected representative gets put out to task on anything that disrespects or violates rules of integrity and respect. With that all being said, I'm a man who's very respectful, full of integrity, stands for something, doesn't fall for anything and everything. And because people say things sometimes don't necessarily make it true. Because people get their feelings hurt doesn't necessarily make it true. It's a fact that we all have a feeling, but every feeling isn't a fact. So we're standing here today, sitting here today, with the task of figuring out how to respond to allegations and a document, a 40-page document, that have said, I am the worst person on the planet. I am some type of martyr. I'm some type of taskmaster or whatever you want to call it. I'm the oppressor in this, in this case that says I've done such horrible things to my staff. That could be farthest from the truth. Ever since I've been in office, I've treated my staff like my own family. That means what? If you were hungry, you got fed. If you needed clothes, I took you shopping. If you needed a pair of shoes, I went in the closet and gave you a pair of shoes. That's how I treated my staff. If you needed a ride home, I took you home. If you needed money to pay your rent, I gave you money out of my pocket to help you pay your rent. When you were down and desolate, I did all I could to help sure that you had an opportunity to get your life together. 
And the sad thing is that I stand before you, I sit here before you today being judged as someone who's horrible, who, who has some other agenda of cruelty to hurt individuals. Everyone in my district knows the person that I am. You people know who I am. So to sit here and take a, a report to kill a character of a father, a grandfather, who we all are in here, and brothers and sisters, it's sad that we all are placed in this position to even have this kind of conversation. It's been argued since this case was opened up that I have not participated and made a mockery of this and have disrespected this process. That is farthest from the truth. Let me just read something to you. My attorneys have reached out. And in May, we were scheduled to meet to discuss this case. The scheduled meeting was postponed because the interviewer had to go on vacation. It was rescheduled again. My attorney and I was at her office waiting for the interviewer to come up. We sat there for a half an hour, nothing. Then my attorney decided to call. Oh, she's stuck in traffic. For three hours, we waited to be interviewed and discuss this matter, only for the counsel not to show up to talk to me, with no explanation why they didn't show up. Then, during a hearing that was scheduled on September 13th, Mario asked the question when my attorneys put it on the record that we waited for three hours and talked she was stuck on traffic. The outside counsel that was hired by this council to crucify us, when Mario asked her to respond, her answer is, respectfully counsel, that's not true. This council went on the record and technically and, and actually lied to the committee and said, I did not wait for three hours to be interviewed. If you can lie at the beginning of a conversation, then the rest of your document is flawed. I am so bothered that I am being put in this situation and acting like I'm some horrible individual. I've read the transcript. I wish you all had an opportunity to read the transcripts because the one and one doesn't equal two in these documents. Their one and one is equal in nine, and I don't know how they got there. For them to come and say that I've done things that I haven't done, made statements I haven't made, and you never sat with me, so the document is one-sided. It's a one-sided document they're asking you to vote on. Process, my, pro my due process has been violated, and it's been said from the committee that the discretion is at the discretion of the committee. So while you've heard today that I was not attending the hearing, well, you know, you tell me in July, you tell me when you, when you start this conversation, when my attorney asks you for, and may ask you for the allegations, what are you charging my client with? You're, we're told on a Friday, we'll have it for you. Then on a Monday, you can't get it. My attorney was blown away. How did they tell you you can't get the allegations? Took them months before they responded to us with some allegations when they charged us on the 21st of August. And when they charged us on the 24th of August, my attorney could only say, I guess they didn't have anything then, so they had to build a case against you. Months went by before they gave us information, but back in May and in June, we, we made ourselves available for an interview, which they didn't show up, and one was canceled. But they sit here and tell you that I didn't want to participate and didn't want to engage. And then when it, when it gets scheduled on the, after, on the 10th, when they reschedule it to the 10th, on the, on the 21st, they scheduled it on the 10th. My attorneys say, I'm out of the country. Can we get an adjournment? The committee has the power to give an adjournment. They chose not to. I got a new attorney that joined on, and we asked for another adjournment for the 10th. Then they put superseding charges into the mix. And then they said, we're going to adjourn to the 13th. On the 13th, we told them that my attorney would not be avail ready because you gave us discovery, which requires us to have five days to look at this stuff. So what they end up doing, discovery, they send us 53 files we could not open. You know on the television show when you ask for discovery and they send you whole boxes of stuff you're supposed to go through within 24 hours? That's what my attorneys were dealing with. 
but you want to say that you're treating me fair in this whole process. And then on the 13th, you knew I could not be there because why I had my big back to school rally. We all do events for our students and our children in our district. I had a big back to school rally with DOE superintendents, educators, staff, thousands of kids with special guests, Kyrie Irving from the Brooklyn Nets and A Boogie with a hoodie. You're telling me that with all that preparation that took months, but the committee couldn't say, let's schedule it another day when they had, to, had the power to do so. What was the rush? If you want to get justice, what was the rush? And then on the 13th, when you didn't complete your conversation, you adjourned it to the 16th. I find out through city and state that there is an ethics hearing on me on the 16th through city and state. But I'm being treated in this process fairly. That's what we call them, being treated fairly. So after the 16th, my attorney reaches out and they say, well, they sent us this letter, say, since you didn't want to be part of it and you didn't want to comply with us, we'll just keep you informed. We'll get it back to you probably later on in the month, beginning of August. My attorney asked why. They said, oh, why? Because one of the council members that are on the committee is going on vacation. Excuse me? You couldn't give me an adjournment, but you're going to hold, hold me hostage because someone on the committee is going on vacation, and you think that's fair? This is us doing this to us. So again, we have a document that's not truly accurate because you only have a one-sided conversation. Because if someone says something that's necessary, it's true. If you were told today that someone stole your shoes, someone, you got to talk to them and say, well, did you tell the shoes or not? Somebody got to get, you got to give them an opportunity. People's emotions are hurting right now. People are upset. And I think this is how we're operating. We're not operating on facts. We're operating in a violation of, due, of the, my, my due process has been violated here, and we're trying to figure out how to rush this through. Why are we so rushed to not find an uh, uh, answer to this as opposed to finding the truth to this? If you'd have sat down with me, which I've always been willing to do, I read you, and I, and I will read you this. This comes from my attorney. This, this document... Excuse me. This document I read is dated May 30th, 2019. And it's addressed to Benjamin Smith from my, co from my counsel. And she says, I'm writing to you to express my complete dissatisfaction and cancellation of a meeting with my office Councilman McKing was ready, willing, and able to participate in your investigation. The meeting was to commence at 2 p.m. at my office at 11 West Prospect Avenue in Mount Vernon. Myself and the Councilman McKing waited until 2.30, only to receive information that the investigator would be late. Thus, no courtesy was extended to myself or Councilman McKing to inform us of the delay. I spoke with the investigator directly. And she said she was stuck in traffic. She told us she would be arriving 30 minutes so or late. My client and I, I had to attend another function about 3.30, but I was willing to wait. I received a call from you at 3.15 p.m. or so indicating the investigator would not be able to keep the appointment. Further, I continue to request the investigation report, which actually, which initially I was told I could review. Again, in all fairness to Council Member King, due process requires that he receive the nature of the charges and what gave rise to such allegations. She concludes, my client continues to deny any wrongdoing. We respect, we respectfully and request mutually dates to complete your investigation. So we asked for more dates to sit down with this body that had to do the investigation. They did not so after this. But they sit here and give you a conversation that's misleading and misdirected. I'm offended that we would get offended. I'm even offended more than last week I ran into a colleague on a Friday evening who told me that there was a Democratic conference that was discussing this situation. And when it was asked of them, was Councilmember King invited to this meeting? Did he know about it? Y'all were told he was invited. The sadness of that is that last week I sent a text to the Speaker's office telling them that I was out of town and for land use, because land use was supposed to be on Tuesday, I would not be in the, in the, in the city that week. They did not relay that message to you that I was out of town. They just told you that I was invited, which gave the impression that I blew off this meeting that was so important that, to discuss me. I just think I'm not being treated fairly. 
It's not right what's happening here. And I don't want people making emotional decisions when due process has been violated. I'm asking you for your support as someone who is duly elected as you are, a father, a grandfather, a husband, someone who cares, someone who's in the, the hands of Christ. I'm asking you all to look inside yourselves and see the truths within this matter. And if we really want to have a real conversation about anything and allegations, then everyone who ever in this body ever gets charged with anything should have the opportunity, but actually have that opportunity to deliver to them in fairness to have their voices heard. This was not the case here today. Regardless of what you heard, you've heard a lot of striking conversation, a lot of words that were put out there, a lot of things to steer emotions to make you feel that I'm this horrible individual and people were crucified. That is not the case. I have been, have been and I will always be a kind and loving soul, and that's where I stand. I implore you today to make a decision, not only that protects this council, but protects us all moving forward. I ask you for your support, and no, and with that all being said, I thank the Most High in Christ, and I pass it all up to him for favor and flavor. Thank you again for your time, everyone. Thank you, Council Member King. We will now move into general orders. I just want to remind all of my colleagues that Rule 9.210 limits the amount of time a member can speak to no more than two minutes and five minutes for the minority leader. We will now begin this portion of general orders, beginning with minority leader, Matteo. Thank you. Um, briefly, I just want to um, make two points for the record. One. For the adjournment, I've said it numerous times, I've said it on the record, the adjournment was not granted because of our concern of protecting staff from being fired and harassed. Um, and that is why the adjournment was not granted. Two, for the record, um, on June 26th, uh, Ben Smith, our legal counsel, emailed um, Mr. King's attorney, um, the email states, hi, Ms. Razor, my apologies for interrupting invocation. Our special counsel is available the week of return, which I believe is the week of July 7th. Do you and the council member have any avail availability during that week? We will accommodate your and his schedules as much as possible. Thanks as always, Ben. That was on June 26th. On July 9th, a response uh, came from Ms. Razor by email that says, Dear Attorney Smith, based upon my client's belief that this investigation is disingenuous, we decline to participate. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, I thought it was extremely important that we ensure that these are on the record. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Matteo. Are there any other members who wish to speak on general orders at this time? Council Member Levin. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, <clears throat> I wanna thank uh, Chair Matteo and the other members of the Standards and Ethics Committee. Uh, I sit on the Standards and Ethics Committee. Um, and I want to acknowledge um, the staff that worked on this um, diligently. Um, and I want to especially recognize um, the witnesses that came forward at um, significant risk um, uh, to their um, professional um, uh, future, and um, and spoke with us um, uh, honestly and um, with credibility. Um, I do want to um, uh, back up what Chair Matteo has said around due process. Um, uh, the fact of the matter is that at the outset of the hearing, um, Councilmember King's attorneys uh, made an opening statement. And, um, and then got up and left for the remainder of the proceeding. Um, they had the opportunity to cross-examine witnesses, the, op the opportunity to call witnesses and present a case, and they, they chose to do neither. Um, and um, to the uh, allegations and the charges themselves, um, it was very concerning, in particular, the conduct regarding uh, Councilmember King's um, calling staff uh, to meetings outside of the office, to his home, 
um, uh, inquiring as to who was cooperating with the investigation, and then subsequent um, actions that were um, retaliatory, in, in fact. And that includes suspensions and firings, um, making um, work very difficult for, for staff members. And um, the fact of the matter is that these thank allegations you, are credible and, and very serious and warrant these sanctions. And I want to thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Council Member Levin. We will now have Council Member Gibson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon, colleagues. Um, it is difficult to be here uh, under these circumstances, but I certainly want to thank the chair of our committee, Steve Matteo, for his incredible leadership and really commitment. The members of the Standards and Ethics Committee have devoted a significant amount of time, endless hours of labor, to make sure that this process was extremely deliberate and fair and equitable. And I echo the sentiments of Chair Matteo in saying that due process and all of the regulations of this body were absolutely followed. What we have as a council and as a body to do and the responsibility of all of us as council members is not only to protect this institution, to protect the council members, but equally as important to protect staff. The staff that work so hard every single day, they give so much time to serve New Yorkers from across 51 council districts. And I really want to acknowledge the bravery and the courageous manner of all of the uh, all of the witnesses that really came forward um, under extremely difficult circumstances for sharing their story. Their stories were compelling and credible, and I believe them in what they endured uh, while they were employed here at the council. And so it is my hope that this body has read the report and really looked through all of the details and really understands that this committee did its job in a fair and equitable manner. And it is my hope that after today, all of the witnesses that came forward, I truly hope and pray that they find healing and peace and know that this is a council that will always stand up for every staff member and making sure that we provide and promote a safe work environment that is free from harassment and retaliation. That is our obligation as elected officials to protect our staff and all of the staff that work here at the City Council. So I ask all of my colleagues to support the recommendations and the resolution before this body. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. We will now be followed by Council Member Menchaca, followed by Council Member King, uh, and then Council Member Van Bramer. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember King, you asked us to look inside and speak. And so that is what's compelling me right now, to speak uh, what I think about what's happening right now. Many words have been used today uh, and leading up to today that include things like contempt and disdain for this body, things that describe what's happening as lynching and crucifixion. These are intense words that should be taken seriously. And so that's what I'm doing. What we're also asking ourselves is whether or not this is a balance and whether or not we need to bring balance. And so that's what I want to just uh, respond to, this idea that, that this should at all be balanced and that the stories that we heard, if these allegations are true, they hit me in particular at the, core, at the core part of what I'm supposed to be doing here on the floor of the city council representing my community, but not just that, representing the staff behind us. Each and every one of us has so many staff that work their hard, hardest to represent not just us, but our communities. And that's who I'm thinking about right now, because it is a somber day and I feel the gravity of this moment. And I want to ensure that the staff that are silent right now are heard. And I want to think about them right now. I also want to think about how we move forward, because if these allegations are true, I'm not sure that this body has a place for you, Councilmember King. And so I will welcome a motion to expel uh, this member. Because if these allegations are true, this is not a time where we can balance this. This is a time where we need a new normal. And we are not in that place of a new normal. And that's what I'm asking for, for this body to continue to, ex to express itself and talk it through. So I'm asking all of you, like Councilmember King has asked you, to speak out and tell your truth and tell you what you think and what you believe as we move forward. 
And the last thing I want to say is. Uh, Thank you, Councilmember okay. Menchaca. I'll come back. Thank you. We will now hear from Councilmember King, followed by Councilmember Van Bramer. Uh, if we were going to have a trial today, then we should have just went here and, and did that. I spoke, and then there's a rebuttal to what, I'm, what I've said. I don't know how that works in plus policies and procedures. So I, right then again, I don't, I don't know where we're going with this. Manchaka, he just mentions if it's true. Well, I never had an opportunity to tell you that they're not true. My, my, we have denied everything. And I know one of the issues that people claim about the gay statement, which I never, never said. But because someone says it, everyone's running down the street on fire saying, ooh, we said that. No, I didn't say that. So this is what we're talking about. If you ever had an opportunity to sit down with me to have a conversation on the allegations, you would have found out what I would have said. My witnesses would have been in and said what didn't happen and what didn't happen. Levins gets on the record and says that I had my attorneys had an opportunity to address the witnesses. No, according to your own council rules, if the council member is not present at a hearing, that the defending council cannot question the witnesses. But he's going to get on record and say my, my attorneys had the, 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 the right to do so when the policies of the council say he, they didn't. This is what I'm saying about misleading and, and just, I don't want to say the word lie, but just downright lying to us. Because some of this stuff is just downright lies. And they're asking you to make a decision when y'all don't even know everything, all the facts. But they're going to skew it so you can only go one way. Just not fair, just not right. My attorney weeks ago filed a notice of claim for defamation of character because doing all this process, People have gotten on television, out of this committee, talking about sexual harassment. I've sexually harassed somebody, sexually harassed this, and there's not one piece of evidence or words in any document accusing me of sexual harassment. You've just defamed my character everywhere. I have girls, grandchildren, and daughters. I'm supposed to live with that? Come on, man. If y'all going to do this, do it right, man, or don't do it at all. So when we might file our notice of claim to sue the city for that, I, weeks later, we get this 48-page document. My attorney says you're being retaliated against. Period. Thank you. Thank you, Member Councilmember King. We will now be followed by Councilmember Richards and then followed by Councilmember Van Bramer. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And um, I wasn't going to speak today um, on this issue. Um, I really came just to cast a vote and to get out of here. Um, but I'm finding it hard here today because of the lack of remorse I'm hearing and sincerity um, for staff members and most importantly a young lady who um, had a substantiated case of uh, against Councilmember King. Um, it's not easy to speak against colleagues as you can imagine um, but I think we are in a new space here in our country. And when we look at the harassment that women face, that we cannot move on and go on as if this is the new norm. We have an obligation to hold those who break the oath, those who retaliate against staff members to the highest standard. When people put us in office, we are to be held to the highest standard. Now, I will say everybody is due their due process as well. Um, but today, we're not here to talk necessarily just about process. Um, these substantiated complaints are really troublesome. Um, and if there is a recommendation for expulsion, I will support that. But I will also put out there that these sanctions are the most extreme. I've been here 17 years uh, at the council. I've never seen uh, sanctions this extreme for a sitting member. Um, so with that being said, I've said all I can say. I'm, I'm just hoping that anybody accused of anything or involved in a situation like this would show some remorse. That being said, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Councilmember Richards. We will now hear from Councilmember Van Bramer. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. I am making a motion to amend resolution number 1138. My motion, which I have in writing here, is to replace the current bill with a resolution to expel Councilmember Andy King from the New York City Council.
the chamber will stand at ease. I want to inform Councilmember Van Bramer that once the amendment is read, you then have two minutes to then explain your proposed amendment. On the amendment from Councilmember Van Bramer, with respect to resolution 1138A, based on the report of the Committee on Standards and Ethics from October 22nd, 2019, it's resolved that the Council of the City of New York should expel council member Andy King. Thank you, I now recognize council member Van Bramer who will have two minutes to speak, followed by minority leader Matteo who will have five minutes to speak according to the rules. Any other member who wishes to speak after that will be granted two minutes. Thank you very much. Within the 48 pages of this report are scenes of staff being held in a council member's private home and told they could not leave unless they divulged confidential information about an investigation. At one of these meetings, the name of a young woman who had filed a sexual harassment complaint against the council member was revealed and her integrity attacked. The report then details that two of the three staff members who were forced to divulge that they had spoken to investigators had their employment terminated or they were forced to quit. The report then goes on to detail incidents of violence in the workplace, possible gross misuse of council funds and staff, not to mention comparing a gay pride parade to child pornography. This committee has made a strong recommendation for strong penalties, and the bar for expulsion should be high. But for me, there is no doubt in my mind that given that this is not a first offense and that this, uh, the severity of this report uh, is such that I believe expulsion is warranted. Now, even if I were the only one to vote for expulsion, I am not afraid to stand alone because I want to stand with Chloe Rivera and all of the others who have come forward, felt harassed, abused, violated, or punished for daring to speak. Chloe Rivera works for the city council today. She walks the hallways, is in the elevator with all of us, and she is watching and listening as are hundreds of other staff members who work at this body. They want to hear what we see, they want to hear what we do, they want to hear that we hear them, that we see them. So because I personally feel these charges are so severe and reprehensible, I am proud to make this motion even if I stand alone because I stand with Chloe Rivera and all of those brave people who have come forward. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Van Braver. Minority Leader Matteo. Thank you. I just want to rise and, and state respectfully, I stand by this committee's hard work, findings and recommendations, and while reasonable people can certainly disagree on the exact penalties, this council has charged the Sands and Ethics Committee with hearing matters of misconduct and recommending the penalties. This committee did that, worked tirelessly, spent hours and hours doing that. So respectfully, I ask my colleagues vote against this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Carlos Menchaca. Thank you. The motion has been put on the floor for us to consider, and I really hope that other members can speak if they feel good or bad about this amendment. I think it's important for us to have a fuller discussion in public if they're comfortable. For me, the way that I'm making this decision is the following. When I think about our staff that continue to ask us to do more for them, to continue to create a new normal, that is what we're doing here today. As harsh as this might feel, this is the kind of standard that we need to set for ourselves and to the communities that we represent. Only a fraction of the people send us to come and represent us here. We are representing every single person. I'm thinking about undocumented folks that would never get the opportunity to vote for me. We're talking about every single person in our district, not just the few who say that we are eligible. We are speaking on behalf of everyone, and that's the kind of responsibility that we have at this body, and the responsibility that we have on each other to ensure that we move forward together. I also cannot support a bill that puts money, taxpayer dollars, on a monitor, a new person that's gonna go out and put a Band-Aid, essentially, uh, 
to monitor the new situation, this essentially makes it almost impossible for a member to do their work. And if these allegations are true, and this committee is saying that they are true, and we have to move through that due process and accept that, then I say expulsion. And I hope that you can take that moment of courage to say no and to send a message to the rest of the body and the future council that's on its way here that is going to flip completely that they are in a new world, a world where this is not okay and that we are going to only accept the things that are good for ourselves and our community and our staff. Our staff are asking to unionize. Our staff are asking for more pay. Our, our staff are asking for a lot right now. And that is where I hope that after this vote, whatever happens, we can continue to look at them and figure out how we can support them. I will be supporting this amendment. Not seeing any others who wish to speak, this debate is now closed. We are now going to call the roll, but I would like first for the clerk to reread uh, the motion that was put forward by Council Member Van Bramer so that members are clear about what they are voting on at this time. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Based on the report of the Committee on Standards and Ethics from October 22, 2019, resolved that the Council of the City of New York should expel Council Member Andy King. And to be clear, if this vote passes, we will adjourn this meeting. If this vote does not pass, we are going to continue with the original mission, excuse me, motion that was put forward on the floor. So we will now begin. We will now have roll call. Adams. I vote no to the amendment. Ampri Samuel. No. Ayala. I vote no to the amendment. Barron. I vote no. Borelli. No. Brannon. No. Cabrera. Chin. I vote no. Cohen. No. Constantinidis. I'd be excused to explain my vote. Permission granted. You know, this has been, uh, I want to first thank uh, Councilmember Matteo and all of the uh, committee who deliberated on these, these penalties. And I thank them for their hard work. This is not an easy decision. Um, th I've heard a lot today, and I feel I need to s say my piece. Uh, you know, I think about the staffers, the, the public servants who work for us every single day, who come to work because they want to make the city a better place. They want to make their districts a better place. And this was a violation of their right to do so. This was an attack on them and their ability to make a living and feed their families, to be able to do the work that they love so, so much. It was a, a, and to hear the complete lack of remorse, to hear no recognition at all of the, the seriousness of this matter, the seriousness of the allegations, the seriousness of what's being alleged, it is disturbing. It is disappointing. It's something that is unbecoming of this body. This job is a privilege. We all swear an oath and have an obligation to the people of the city of New York to do our jobs and protect those who need a voice. Councilmember King's staff did not have the voice because he sought to take it away from them and to penalize them and to attack them. And I am unbelievably dis in disbelief today on the myriad of statements that have been made. So I will be joining my colleagues, even if it's just two of us, but I will be voting yes on this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Carnegie. No. Deutsch. No. Diaz. Drum. No. Espinal. I will yes. Eugene. Abstain. Gibson. I vote no on the amendment. Jonai. No on the amendment. Gordenchik. No on the amendment. Holden. No. Kalos. 
No on the amendment. King. Ku. No. Kozlowitz. No on the amendment. Lansman. Yes. Lander. No. Levin. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, so I, um, I do appreciate very much um, the spirit by which this amendment was introduced. Um, Councilmember Van Bramer um, spoke eloquently and from the heart, um, uh, and in particular recognizing Chloe Rivera and, um, and what she has had to, the ordeal with which she has had to um, endure. Um, while I think it may be appropriate um, to call on Councilmember King to resign the office and step down, um, and to acknowledge um, uh, that the conduct that he has displayed is unbecoming of a council member, uh, it is unbecoming of this body, it weakens this body, it puts staff at risk, it puts their health at risk, it puts their well-being at risk. Um, I stand by the process of this committee um, and uh, we put forward um, a set of recommendations based on a, a process um, that included um, a lot of hours of work, it included a substantial um, body of evidence uh, which we deliberated over for many hours. And while I think it may be appropriate to again call on, on Council Member King um, to resign his office, um, I do stand by the recommendations of this committee uh, and, um, and therefore I vote no on this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. No. Lewis. No on the amendment. Mizell. Menchaca. Yes on the amendment. Miller. No. Moya. Perkins. Yes on the amendment. Powers. It's permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Um, you know, I came here today to support my colleagues who went through this process for it seems seemingly two years and to um, uphold the process by the which the city council is able to go through um, and, and deliberate on issues and to uh, give people a fair hearing, which I think is what Andy King uh, received. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I was hoping he, to come here today and, and hear an apology for the people that were affected by this and to hear remorse for it. And instead, we heard complaints about the process, complaints about uh, times waiting, things like that. Um, I have all the confidence in my colleagues to be able to, um, to be able to make a reasonable decision here. But I have to say, I'm very disappointed in what I heard today in terms of um, uh, remorse or apology. And I have to do what I think is my conscience here, and I'm going to vote yes. Thank you. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, I just want to acknowledge the fact that in this committee, we have our colleagues are part of this committee as well. Um, and I want to respect the process that they put forth and believe in them and believe that they did uh, pursue due process um, and, and did the best uh, they could to make sure they gave uh, Councilmember King an opportunity to defend himself. But uh, hearing what I heard today um, and that the basis of the argument being made by Councilmember King is a lack of due process um, and not necessarily uh, being remorseful. Speaking to the, the staff members that have uh, come forward, uh, it just, it just um, it doesn't sit well by me. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, what we're talking about here with the sanctions that we're moving forward with are gonna make it very challenging for Council Member King to even do his job as a council member in his own district. The people did send him up here to do some work um, and he's not gonna be in any committees. He's gonna be gone for 30 days. And to be perfectly honest, uh, it'll be very hard for him considering what we're about to put him through uh, to do proper business in the city council. Now he has the right to do that business, but council members 
might not want to work alongside him anymore. Um, and it's just a challenging thing here. So I am going to vote yes on the amendment for expulsion. Richards. I wasn't going to say uh, Chloe's name, but uh, for Chloe Rivera, I vote aye. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. We as council members, we have responsibilities. We have responsibilities to our district and we have responsibilities to this body. And we learn from constituents and we learn from our colleagues. Now we might not always agree. Clearly we disagree all the time. But we also have to acknowledge people's experiences, their perspectives, and what we've heard. And to the staffers, I was one of you, many people on this body were also on staff. The Committee on Standards and Ethics has former staff people. They have people of color, women of color, a woman of color from the Bronx who had to deliberate and thoughtfully think about what she was putting forward. And that is one of the reasons why I stand by this committee, how difficult it is to come to this decision when we all know how much work we do. And the reflection and the remorse that has come from Council Member Key, from Council Member King, safe to say, is incredibly underwhelming. And that's what makes this decision so difficult for all of us, and that we're disappointed. We're disappointed. So I've said this before, perceived character aside of the council member, this is about process, and that process should be respected. And I'm gonna stand by the Committee on Standards and Ethics, and I'm gonna vote no on this amendment. And I, and I think I stand with a lot of people when we ask and demand that more reflection and more remorse be evident and that apology be issued for all of the people on this staff who are going through this and had the courage to step forward. Thank you, I vote no on this amendment. Rodriguez. Permission granted. And I believe that the committee has done a great job. They've been going through a process uh, I will respect the process and the recommendation. And also knowing that even though we believe that justice is blind, but usually the justice, when you look at black and Latino, is completely different to other people who are not black and Latino. I will respect this process. I think that they have done the job. I don't believe that the council, based on what we heard, when we read, had the right to expel the council member. I believe that the recommendations that they have made are fair and therefore I will vote no on this amendment. Thank you. Rose. No on the amendment. Rosenthal. With permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. On behalf of Chloe Rivera and all staff, I vote yes. Thank you. Salamanca. No on the amendment. Torres. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, like most of my colleagues, all of, all of my colleagues, um, I'm just, I'm appalled and sickened by what I read. Um, and there's no question a case could be made that the conduct is so egregious that it's disqualifying. But I want to respect the process that was conducted by my colleagues who put far more time and energy into this than I did. And I just want to say that I resent the Trumpian insinuation that this is a witch hunt. Uh, I have as much confidence in the integrity of this process as I have in the integrity of Corey Johnson and Karen Koslowitz and Steve Levin and Margaret Chen and Vanessa Gibson. There is no doubt in my mind that all of the Mestella public servants conducted this investigation fairly and with integrity. I want to respect their recommendations, so I'm going to vote no on the amendment. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. As elected officials, as people with considerable power within this body, we need to do more to hold one another accountable. We are mandated to report harassment, and we need to take that obligation seriously. We need to have challenging conversations with one another about appropriate behavior, even when it strains collegiality. We need to stand up for staff. They work long hours in high-pressure jobs for far too often 
not enough pay, and they are at will employees. We owe it to them to be their allies and advocates in addition to benefiting from the fruits of their labor. Even during the course of today's discussion, when there was an opportunity to display an ounce of remorse, instead we heard finger pointing and name calling amongst our colleagues. And it is with that that I vote yes on this amendment. Ulrich, a pass for now. Vallone. No on the amendment. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. I, I wanted to uh, mention, because I, uh, in the rush to make my two minutes uh, previously, uh, that I have great respect for Chair Matteo and the work of the committee. Um, and, and look, I've been very public about my feelings about this uh, since day one, but I do want to echo what many of my colleagues have said, regardless of how they vote. Uh, while I was prepared to make the amendment, um, uh, it was only after I heard Councilmember King speak uh, that I knew that I had to. Um, and the absolute lack of remorse uh, the absolute lack of even understanding that anything had been done wrong, anything. Blaming other council members, blaming lawyers, blaming staff, uh, that to me is just even more of the pattern of behavior that brought us to this moment in the first place. And to say all of that with hundreds of city council staff members, either in this room as we speak right now, or listening or watching this on their computers in their cubicles over across the street at 250 Broadway is absolutely disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. And, and I wanna say again, uh, because she came bravely forward today in a Daily News op-ed uh, to Chloe Rivera, uh, who gave me permission uh, to share her story uh, in my comments. Um, that is an unbelievable act of brave, bravery uh, as is staying here and working in this body after having had the experience of filing a complaint against a council member. She is still here because she is smart. She is a public servant and wants to do this work. We should honor all of the young people like Chloe Rivera who are doing this work. And so because I want to honor that work and because I'm so outraged, by the lack of remorse, I vote yes. Thank you, Councilmember Van Bramer. Jaeger. No. Ulrich. I would like to explain my vote, if I may. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I have tremendous respect uh, for my colleagues, especially for my good friend, the chair of the Ethics Committee, Steve Matteo. I respect the process uh, that brought us here today uh, the deliberative process uh, and the amount of time that they spent. But I do think that perhaps what's missing is respect for uh, putting more importance in respect for the people over the process. And based upon the report, what I've read, based upon what I read in today's Daily News, and, um, and, and just listening to everyone's comments today. That's why I asked for a pass, not to make a mockery of the process, but because I genuinely uh, wanted to listen to what my colleagues had to say. Uh, I will be voting yes for the amendment. I am voting yes for the amendment. Thank you. Matteo. No. Combo. I vote no. Speaker Johnson. Permission granted. You know, I said it. Um, when I gave my remarks during speaker time, but one thing that has been done over the course over the course of the last uh, eight months and was done again today here on the floor of this body is Councilmember King attacking the process, attacking the integrity of the process, attacking the committee, um, and I um, I find so much of what has happened to be unacceptable and odious and wrong. But what I have tried to do as speaker of this body is to allow a process with integrity that respects confidentiality, that respects due process rights, 
that goes by the letter of what we are supposed to do here internally in the council. That is why you saw an independent prosecutor hired. That is why you saw the committee not rush to judgment, but take a long time. That is why you saw the Office of General Counsel protect the witnesses over and over again when they were facing retaliation. So the easy thing to do for me today would be yes, to vote to expel Councilmember King. But as I said, I think he should resign. I think given what he has done, he should resign. But I need to stand by as speaker of this body. I must stand by the five members that have deliberated over hours and hours and hours and spent months and months and months working on this. I am speaker, I support the committee. This is a terrible situation that Councilmember King has put this body in. The way he has treated staffers is unacceptable. I want to thank them again for their bravery, for their courage in coming forward. His behavior is egregious and appalling. I have tremendous sympathy for these staffers. We will continue to protect them and make sure their livelihoods are not threatened. We will monitor his office, but I have to vote no on this amendment because I have to stand by the work that the committee did. Thank you, Council Member Public Speaker Corey Johnson. This chamber will stand at ease for a moment. Um, in order for this amendment to pass, it needs a majority vote of the members present. If it does not, the resolution will be laid over for a future stated meeting. At that meeting, it would require a two-thirds vote of all members. If it does fail, we continue with general discussion of general orders, and we have members that are signed up at this time. According to the amendment that was put for a vote by this body, we have 12 in the affirmative, 34 in the negative, and one abstention. This motion is defeated. We will now continue with general orders on Bill 1138. And on the docket, we had Council Member Robert Cornegie. Council Member Cornegie, would you care to speak at this time? No, no majority leader, thank you. Thank you, we now have Council Member Richie Torres to continue to speak on 1138 as originally presented. Thank you, um, Madam Majority Leader. You know, the egregious misconduct of Council Member Andy King offers us an occasion for deeper soul searching as an institution. I've been in the city council for nearly six years and I've seen more activity by standards and ethics in the past year and a half than I ever saw in the preceding four years. It could be that in prior city councils, there were no abuses of power to investigate, or it could be that there were in fact abuses of power, but those abuses have historically been swept under the rug. History tells us that covering up abuse is what institutions do. It is in the nature of institutions, whether it be a news organization in relation to Harvey Weinstein or the church in relation to victims of sex abuse or the city council, it's in the nature of institutions to protect themselves, to protect their own insiders, their own interest, their own image, often at the expense of truth and often to the exclusion of justice and closure for the victims. So we are not only voting to punish Council Member King in a deeper sense, we're voting to break the culture of secrecy and impunity that for too long might have enabled the abuse of public office in the city council. And so I applaud the speaker, not only for exposing abuses of power, but also holding accountable the very elected officials who abuse the public office that has been entrusted to them by the people. And the operative word here is trust. As elected officials, none of us enjoy the divine right of kings. None of us is entitled to govern our power has been entrusted. And when we abuse that power, when we betray the trust that is the source of that power, we must be held accountable. The rule of law must be upheld without fear or favor, without exception or hesitation. And so I want to commend the speaker for his leadership. Thank you, Council Member Torres. We will now hear from Council Member Koselwitz. Thank you. First, I want to say thank you 
to Council Member Matteo, leading us to come to the decision that we made. You know, we didn't elect Council Member King. The public did. But we want to remind the public of what he did. We sat and listened to his employees come and talk separately. And it, was, it brought us to tears of what they had to go through. Nobody should have to go through that. Nobody should have to get up in the morning and dread going to work because they were going to be ridiculed, punished, threatened, anything that could harm them. I think that it was very hard for us to, at first, to judge a colleague, but it became easier to judge the colleague after everything we heard that the colleague had done. And we came to the conclusion of the sanctions that we put on the colleague. You know, for the next two years and two months, Andy King will remember what he did. He will have someone watching over him. He will have to pay retribution. And I think that is punishment that he deserves. And hopefully, his constituency, if he ever decides to run for any kind of office again, his constituency sees what he has done and he is not fit to run for any kind of office. So, obviously, I was a part of this, and I stick by what we came up with. Thank you, Councilmember Kosowitz. Are there any other members who wish to speak on general orders at this time? We will now close general orders, and we will go on now to report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Standards and Ethics, pre-considered resolution 1138. A couple of general orders, and at this time, I will ask for a roll call vote on pre-considered resolution 1138. Thank you. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I, I, I sit here today listening to everything that's transpired, and uh, this has been such a disappointing session. It's been a disappointing meeting uh, for me. It's been disappointing that we're here today discussing very, very difficult and disappointing circumstances. You know, when I read the report and read all the witness accounts, it was painful to read the accounts. And as difficult as the accounts were to repeat, I would imagine, before the committee, my decision today is difficult. And I'm sure, like the rest of my colleagues, at least some, it is a painful one to come to a conclusion as this, as it pertains to one of our colleagues that said, I vote yes to the recommendations of the committee. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, as my colleague just stated, this is very difficult. Um, no one wants to be in this position. But having read the entire um, recommendations and what was put forth by the committee, um, I just want to, one, um, applaud the committee members but I also want to recognize all of the brave staffers who came forward. Um, having been a staffer several times, and even in this body, um, sometimes you feel like you're just an employee at will, and no one will listen. Um, but today, I'm proud of my colleagues for listening and actually doing something about it. And so it is difficult, but at the same time, I'm comfortable in how I'm voting, because this is really about the staffers and making sure that they are supported and people know that when they come to work they're serving their community but they also have the support of the entire council so with that i vote yes for the recommendations the resolution thank you ayala permission to explain my vote permission granted um you know i i just i'm, I'm i've been sitting here listening quietly and 
just reflecting on everything that has been said and I'm just, I'm really saddened because I too was a staffer and I didn't have, thank God, I, I, didn't, I never had to work in, in an environment such as the one that has been described today. But as a woman, as a woman of color, as a woman who has endured um, harassment, I, I am appalled. I am disgusted that there was, there was ample opportunity to apologize, to explain, and that we had to sit here and listen to complaint after complaint and complaint about due process being violated. Well, there were people that were violated that felt that they were violated, and those people did not feel heard today because the council member neglected to so much as even apologize. Um, and I get it, if you don't feel that you did something wrong, then you probably feel like you shouldn't have to apologize. But there is documented evidence there was more than one individual that came in with the same complaint. And so I am voting I, and I, I, I pray for peace for all of those the individuals that felt that we didn't hear them and that so much time elapsed before anything was done. Um, I probably vote aye. Thank you. Baron. Request to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. We know that staff is very critical and essential to the work that we do. I've always tried to make sure that I support staff in their interests and the things that they bring forward. The person who's been named works with the Higher Education Committee. And when it became known to me definitively that this was an allegation that had been brought, I contacted the Speaker's office to make sure that I did all that I needed to do so that there was no undue interaction between the parties involved. So I'm always very concerned about fulfilling the responsibility of my position when I know that there's an issue at hand. When I was in Albany, this person was also in Albany. I didn't know her at the time uh, and was subjected to a similar kind of situation. And in that instance, I believe I was the only one who wrote a letter saying that the process where this person was subjected to uh, this type of behavior was in, uh, inadequate, inappropriate, and needed to be corrected. I believe I was the only one to speak on behalf of this claimant in Albany at that time. However, Today, on this resolution, I am abstaining, but I do want it noted for the record that I believe that staff should be supported and protected in all instances. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, I think I, I speak for a lot of my colleagues um, when I say that we we didn't sign up for a job where we have to vote um, on the behavior to censure the behavior of our colleagues. Um, it's not easy. Um, I give credit to um, Councilman Matteo and his committee for the work that they did over months and months on this case. Um, and, the, and the facts that for most of us we're still just learning about now. Um, as a staffer, as a former staffer in this council, I know what a thankless job it is. I know how hard it is. Um, and having a, a boss that's supportive um, is, is basically the baseline um, with work that is, is so difficult and um, demanding. Um, but I support, I have faith that if the committee whose job it is to investigate issues like this if they felt th that they felt that this was the strongest uh, punishment that they could that they could give and that's why I'm voting yes on the resolution thank you Cabrera chin permission to explain my vote permission granted yes 
first, I wanted to uh, thank Chair Mario and all my colleagues on the committee. We have spent so much time deliberating on this. And every piece of evidence we review carefully. And I wanted to personally thank all the staff witness that came forward. And thank you for your courage. Because when we heard your testimony, it is so unacceptable that in the city council that staff get treated like that. All of us, we work with our staff, we respect our staff, and they help us in everything that I do. And every council member also feel that. But we went through so many training in this council. The issue is, how do we treat people we respect? Is the whole power dynamic? How can we disrespect people just because they work for us? This is really, really unacceptable. And that's why the committee, all of us, look, we have family, we have kids, we spend a lot of time delivering on this. And I hope that my colleague will support our recommendation. And I strongly vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Cohen. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, thank you. Uh, while there is no doubt that substantiated facts here are very, very disturbing, I, I do just want to talk for a second ab about the process. Um, you know, I know most of my colleagues probably do read every bill before they, they vote, uh, but I personally rely on the committee system uh, to do their job, and I have tremendous confidence in the people on this committee that they did do uh, the work that was necessary. Uh, they did sit through uh, all of the, listening to all the testimony. They reviewed all the evidence. Uh, they voted unanimously. Uh, that is uh, very, very meaningful to me. And based on the recommendations of the committee, uh, I'm going to vote aye on the resolution. Thank you. Constantinidis. May I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, you know, I just came off a vote for a harsher penalty. And it would be easy for me to say, to vote no in, in saying that we deserve uh, to have passed that resolution. But the choice before me now is to vote for the penalties that this committee has worked diligently and hard on, um, or to allow Councilmember King to go on without punishment. Um, he has shown no remorse. Today is about the staffers that have been attacked. This is about the attack on their livelihood, the attack on their identities, the attack of who they are. And I cannot uh, play politics with that. We need to make sure that we send a stark message, not only to Councilmember King, but to anyone who would think to violate the sanctity of this institution, the sanctity of anyone's employment, that we will hold them accountable. Uh, so I vote uh, yes today uh, on uh, this current resolution as well because we need a better body. We need to make sure that this institution continues to operate in a way that protects all, that hears all, that fights for all, and that we continue to recognize that this is a privilege, that we serve our constituents every single day with a privilege to take care of them and give them a voice. So I, I thank you again to the committee for their strong work, and I vote yes. Thank you. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Yes. Espinal. Permission to speak my vote? Permission granted. Uh, just uh, as a former staffer, first and foremost, I just want to thank the staff for speaking up when they felt uh, that their rights were violated. I know it's not easy, uh, and it takes a lot of courage. I also uh, want to thank uh, Matteo, uh, I know him to be someone who is fair, uh, someone who uh, respects the process, and and he doesn't have the easiest job in this in this in this body, uh, being that he holds a, a committee uh, that takes on the important work as we're seeing today. So I want to thank him and and uh, everyone in that committee uh, uh, for taking uh, for doing the work and and putting up this recommendation. And for those reasons, I vote aye. Thank you. Eugene, I vote aye. Gibson. 
permission to briefly explain? Permission granted. Thank you again. And I just want to add on and just say that, you know, I really thank uh, the speaker and Chair Matteo and all of the members of the committee. Um, this has been a physically and emotionally draining process for the five of us to sit on this committee. And I appreciate all of my colleagues in respecting and having confidence in the process. Um, we certainly wanted to, again, be extremely fair and follow protocol and follow the rules of this body. Um, and I appreciate the witnesses coming forward under challenging times, feeling disloyal you know, in the council and not really feeling the strength to come forward, but somehow, some way they did it. And so I stand with them again in what they have endured and really want to make sure that we assure those staff members and really every staff member that it is our responsibility to protect them at all times. And so once again, I thank the witnesses for coming forward and thank my colleagues on the committee, Council Member Levin, Council Member Koslowitz, Council Member Chin, and Chair Matteo, and I will be supporting the resolution before the body. Thank you. Thank you. Joan Aye. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Briefly, um, I want to say thank you to all of you who are voting today. Um, at the beginning of my conversation, I mentioned how I felt about my staff. Uh, maybe it might have fell on deaf ears. Um, but at the end of the day, I thank all my staff who's worked with me. Um, and I'm going to continue to do what I can to be Christ's child and serve. And I vote no on this today. Thank you. Thank you. Deutsch. Yes. Ku. I will aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. I vote yes. Levin. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just want to clarify uh, a remark I made earlier. Um, with regard to um, the due process uh, in the hearing that we had at the Standards and Ethics Committee, um, uh, Councilmember King is correct that without him being present, his attorneys could not call witnesses or, um, or cross-examine the witnesses presented um, by the, pr the prosecution. However, um, they could have objected, they could have remained and objected, and he himself could have been present and therefore have called um, on either two of the hearing dates, called uh, witnesses, um, and allowed his attorneys to cross-examine witnesses. And um, in both instances, he declined to participate on either hearing day, and uh, his attorneys declined to even remain present to uh, render an objection to any uh, answers that any of the witnesses gave. Uh, so that was just to clarify the record there. Um, and then secondly, I, I do want to, um, um, to speak directly to those witnesses that came forward in this process. Um, uh, they um, took on such a responsibility um, to do this and truly endured um, um, an immensely difficult uh, situation in time and had to wrestle with um, uh, uh, facing these these dilemmas in their professional life that nobody should ever have to face. Um, nobody should ever have to face that, um, what's detailed in this report. Um, and, uh, and so my heart goes out to them. Um, I wish them nothing but the best in their professional endeavors. Um, and I want to thank them for uh, coming forward. It took real guts. And I want to thank also uh, Chloe Rivera for, for coming forward as well uh, and displaying genuine courage at this thank time. Thank you, Councilmember. And with Levine. that, I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. You know, abuse of power, abuse of staff is not a new offense. It's been occurring in legislative bodies for a long time, but it is rarely, rarely does it face consequences because staff often fear to speak up and to speak out, and because colleagues often <clears throat> fear to hold one of their own accountable. And I am really proud of the staff who, against very clearly articulated threats, found the courage to speak out publicly and privately. It's because of them that we're here. And I'm really proud of the Standards and Ethics Committee and Speaker Mat uh, Chair Matteo, who put forward a meticulous, extensive, 
uh, profoundly fair, in my opinion, process to arrive at uh, what are the most serious sanctions uh, that I'm aware this body has ever levied. And uh, we're sending the message to staff who may be victims in the future that you can speak out and we will back you when you do. Um, and so I will be voting yes. Thank you. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I will be voting in support of this resolution. And I know the other resolution or amendment failed, um, but I also remain committed to maintaining my voice for the resignation of my colleague, Councilmember Andy King. Um, I also want to make sure that we think about this in terms of a long-term commitment to a better city council that has staff that are supported. And so let's figure out how we do that. That's the kind of work that I think we can do more of, and I hope that after this vote, we can sit down and caucus around that. Imagine what would happen if we allow staff to tell us how we could support them. What would they say? How could we do that? I think that would be that would leave me feeling good in terms of the kind of work. And I know that we have done a lot already. I don't think we've done enough. Let's do more. Let's let them lead us as a sign of reconciliation as we move forward uh, with our staff who need our support. I vote aye. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain, please. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, first, I want to express uh, my respect for the work of, of uh, Chair Matteo and, and the members of the Committee on Standards and Ethics, as well as Central Staff and their efforts in regards to this matter and, 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 and ensuring that we protect in the, the body, not just the integrity of the body, but those who, who've come forth to, to have their voice heard. The seriousness of these charges may, uh, that, that have been made demand that the members of the body be afforded every opportunity to weigh all of the evidence presented. Despite the reasoning of the, com the reasonings of the committee in its decision to recommend disciplinary actions outlined in the resolution, I myself um, am still troubled um, with voting to, 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 to sanction uh, to these sanctions without hearing the, the total defense of, of Council Member King. As many have stated how appalling the, the, the charges uh, that we have heard in the testimony we heard today was the, the fact of the matter is the fact that remains that um, it is a lot of information to digest. It is the information that me in good conscience have not been able to come to um, because of the lack of not just information for me prior to this point in time, but um, the time to be able to assess that. Uh, we have an obligation to ensure that we are taking this vote uh, to ensure justice, not uh, for any other reasons. Uh, therefore, I, I will be abstaining on the vote. Thank you. Moya. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Permission to ex explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I'm voting yes. Um, as I stated earlier, I came here today with the expectation to vote yes on this resolution, which was a culmination of two works, two years of work by my colleagues, and I walked into this chamber prepared to vote on this resolution. Um, Chair Matteo, I feel strongly, is one of the best servants in, in the council, and I and perhaps the only person who could ensure that this was a fair process outside of politics. And his and the colleagues on the committee, uh, Council Member Chin, Gibson, Coswitz, and Levin, I feel the same way. They are uh, fair arbitrators and people who ensure a fair process. Um, but after I heard the comments uh, previously, I didn't believe there would be anything that would truly change the behavior of the council member here in question. 
uh, and that's ultimately why I believed I had to vote yes. Um, but with that being said, I, I, I fully support the uh, committee here, the work that's done by, by the staff and, um, and Chair Matteo, and I, you know, and and I'm voting yes alongside my colleagues because I believe we have to move on a motion here to ensure that there is a penalty for the behavior in that report. And I want to thank all of them for their work. I vote yes. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Uh, in order, in order for someone to rehabilitate, they have to recognize, they have to recognize that there's an issue. Um, an inability to recognize any wrongdoing is very, very dangerous. I just want to be mindful, um, make sure we're mindful of that, um, that there has been no recognition of wrongdoing whatsoever by Councilmember Andy King at this moment. Um, and, and that is a problem for even staff that would be overseen by a monitor. Um, I was also a staff member like many of us here and just the, the council member, the council member's presence in and around these staffers that have been harassed um, in itself can be traumatizing and can have uh, severe consequences. Um, and we, I hope, um, and I guess I'll speak to Council Member King, that we work towards rehabilitation in, in the outcome of what we have here today, which is following through on the recommendations made by the committee. I wanna thank the staff for uh, their courage to come out and speak and to know that we're going to continue to build the process by which um, they feel protected and safe and, and that if and when this type of stuff happens, we, we do something about it and, and we take it seriously. I also want to thank Council Member Matteo and the committee um, who I have the utmost uh, respect for. Matteo, uh, Chin, Gibson, Koslowitz, Levin are outstanding elected officials that I have the utmost um, respect for. So thank you for that work and thank you, uh, Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, and I'm going to vote aye on this amendment. Thank you. Richards. I vote aye. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I just want to send, I guess, just a clear message that if you cannot bring yourself to operate respectfully within, to operate respectfully within the expectations of this body, then maybe this body isn't for you. And I say that because we have had other elected officials here in Albany and DC across the country behave irresponsibly. And we have rules and we have a committee to deal with, with those consequences and those penalties. And again, I, I stand with the, with, with the committee and those women who had to read those allegations and to make those decisions thoughtfully and pragmatically and with all of their constituencies in mind. And so with that unequivocally, I vote yes on this amendment. Thank you. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. This is about protecting the staff in the public and private sectors. And whatever we do in the city of New York definitely has an impact in other municipalities in our nation. Eh, lo que esta votación significa es mandar un mensaje de que nosotros protegemos a los staffs en nuestra ciudad, en el sector privado, en el sector público, Lo que nosotros hacemos en la ciudad de Nueva York tiene impacto, tiene repercusión en otras ciudades y en la nación. Y aunque las cosas marchan mal a nivel nacional, nosotros aquí tenemos esta gran oportunidad de mandar un mensaje de que nosotros en Nueva York sí protegemos a los staff del sector privado y del sector público. Y con eso voto yes. Thank you. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. It is really my hope that Councilmember King will reflect on this decision and see the error of his ways and how egregious his actions were and the impact that it's had on others. As a woman of color, I cannot sanction his actions. I hope that staff will not view this as the norm and will view today's procedures as unconditional support for our staff 
and the value that they bring to this body. And I want to thank the committee and all those who spoke courageously against the violation of our staff's rights and our sensibilities. And with that, I sadly vote aye. Thank you. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. First, I want to express my gratitude to Chloe Rivera. I give enormous credit to her for speaking truth to power and refusing to back down in her pursuit of justice. To go through sexual harassment multiple times in one's career as she has and to demand justice each time is excruciatingly hard and courageous. This is a burden that survivors of workplace harassment and abuse are forced to carry in addition to the harassment itself. We have seen this again and again as the Me Too movement has spread across the country and the world. Survivors who come forward are in grave danger of being re-traumatized. I am grateful to all those who have come forward with nothing to gain and much to lose. In the private sector, if sexual harassment happens, the perpetrator is disciplined. If retaliation happens, the perpetrator is fired. To see lawmakers not being held to the same standard is incredibly disheartening. Taking appropriate disciplinary action against Councilmember King is complicated by the fact that he was chosen by his constituents to represent them. He is responsible to them, but he is also responsible to this body, and that is why I'm voting for these disciplinary measures. And that is why I am urging Councilmember King to resign his seat immediately. He must take full responsibility for his own actions and not allow his status as council member to protect him. Council member King is not above the law. Thank you. Torres. I just permission to explain my vote briefly. Permission granted. I, when I was praising the integrity of the members of the Standards and Ethics Committee, I neglected to pay tribute to Steve Matteo, who I think is as apolitical, as dispassionate, as even-tempered a member as any in this body. And I trust any findings that he presents to us. Uh, so I, I'm going to vote aye without hesitation. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, Helen Rosenthal, Councilmember Rosenthal referenced the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement for me is more than about sexual harassment. It's about the abuse of power. And I think today we're voting not only on the fate of one particular member, but we're voting affirmatively on a culture shift that was brought on by the Me Too movement, and, and that is a culture shift that I vote for affirmatively, so I vote aye. Thank you. Salamanca. Aye. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, so I do I want to thank uh, the staffer who filed the initial complaint and the members of Council Member King's staff who cooperated uh, with the investigation, who chose at great personal sacrifice to hold this body accountable for upholding the Council's internal rules and laws against harassment. Uh, their courage and personal integrity should never be forgotten. I, and I also want to just publicly note that uh, Chair Matteo is one of the most honorable people that I know both in this body and in public life. And so I want to thank him for his incredible work and integrity throughout this entire process. And uh, with that, uh, I vote aye. Thank you. Ulrich. Madam uh, Majority Leader, permission to explain my vote briefly? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Um, I, I am going to be voting yes uh, for, I'm, I'm sorry, in favor of the committee's report and recommendation, uh, but I want to uh, bring out just another point, if I may. Um, I consider the chair of the Standards and Ethics Committee, Steve Matteo, a personal friend, and I think he is above reproach, and he, is, he has always conducted himself with the utmost integrity and carried out his duties 
uh, to the best of his ability. Um, so my vote for the amendment is not any uh, slight to him or to the, any of the members of the committee whom I also have the utmost respect for. My concern is that the council today is voting to punish Andy, Andy and also his uh, constituents. His constituents did not break any rules. His constituents did not commit any crime, and yet they are going to be deprived of the same type of representation and advocacy that we all strive to provide for our constituents because we are going to render their council member ineffective. We are taking him off committees. Uh, he will not have uh, the same oversight capability that we have and that we enjoy to hold agencies accountable on behalf of the districts that we represent. And his voice will be, not somewhat, but, but substantially dis diminished in this body. And so if you think that what he has done and what is contained in this report is so egregious and so wrong, then why not offer a stiffer penalty for him individually, politically, financially, or some other way? Why must we also be punishing his constituents? I know that's not the goal of the report or the committee, but I think that inadvertently that is what we are doing. But I vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Vallone. Aye. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. Uh, so I, I too just want to mention again, uh, Chair Matteo and I spoke a few times over the last uh, 48 hours, and I, I respect uh, him and the committee's uh, work on this matter. Obviously, uh, my strong personal feelings about uh, uh, how severe the penalty uh, should be. Notwithstanding, uh, I vote in favor of this amendment. Thank you. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Just a moment to briefly explain my vote, please. Mission granted. Thank you. Um, I want to start off by thanking my colleagues on the committee. Um, my colleagues certainly do not want to be in this position or on the committee, and I think that's the exact reason why you want them on the committee. Um, I thank them for their, their professionalism and feeling the emotions of the witnesses and acting prudently and responsibly, so I thank them. More importantly, I thank the witnesses for their bravery. We certainly felt their emotion and felt obligated to make sure that they are safe, and we are doing that today. I stand by our recommendations that we are acting responsibly, prudently, and justly. Um, and for staffers watching, we will always do what we can to ensure that you are safe. Um, and with that, I thank all my colleagues, and I vote yes. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Before reading the vote tally, I want to make sure that everyone's absolutely clear on the votes we have taken today. The motion to amend this resolution brought forward by Council Member Jimmy Van Bramer failed by a vote of 34 in the negative and 12 in the affirmative and one abstention. And therefore, we will not have any future votes on this amendment. The vote we just took on resolution 1138 requires two thirds of the council in order to pass. We have 44 votes in the affirmative, one negative, and two abstentions. So in this case, we have the two thirds that is required by the council in order to put forward the sanctions and that this particular resolution now passes. We'll now have the introduction and the reading of bills. None. We will ha now have Speaker Corey Johnson to close this meeting, but we will have prior to that the discussion of resolutions. Seeing none, we will now go into resolutions. resolutions. 
None. And then we will go into general discussion. Are there any members that are present here today that wish to speak on general discussion? Seeing none, we will now go into closing by Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, this meeting of Monday, October 28th is hereby adjourned. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson.